Today I have two pretty dresses to show you made with woven fabrics, v necklines, princess seams, half sizes, sneak peek and original and a hack. Lots of fun sewing to see so keep watching. Hi sewing friends, my name is Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing limitless sewing and I have some limitless sewing to show you today I have made a pattern as per the pattern everything correctly no changes and then I've decided to make a few creative changes to my second version similar but different super fun I've recently been a pattern tester for each to stitch and this dress is called Celeste dress Celeste means light blue in Spanish. I love the name. I just, anything that is Spanish for me is like music to my ears because, you know, it is my first language. So I love the sound and the look. Celeste dress. Because this is a new pattern, it is 20% off from today and for the first week. I will leave the link down in the description box. Maybe while you watch this video, you fall in love with the style and want to try it for yourself. It is an affiliate link and I do make a small commission from there. This is a dress that is a relaxed fit dress, shift style dress. It is not a fitted dress, it has a V neckline, it has princess seams with individual cup sizes as always. Little pockets there on the side that have made in a super fun way, not hard to sew. And they're the types that don't add bulk or that don't move around either. The center front bodice is cut slightly higher than the natural waist. And there is a center front skirt piece that is slightly gathered there. On the back there's also princess seams and the design has short sleeves. I have to point out that there is an invisible side zipper there as an option. And it does say in the pattern that it is optional. I know for my body shape and for what I like, whenever I have dresses that have zippers, I never end up using them. I can just wiggle in anyway. So from the get-go, I knew I wasn't even going to be thinking about the zipper option there. But I know a lot of people really appreciate having a zipper. It's up to you whether you want to sew the zipper, whether you think you need it for fit. I think for a lot of people, you would be just fine sewing it without it. The fabrics for this style are sort of specific not that specific but it's not like you can just go ahead and make this with anything that you have around that is woven it is designed for woven fabrics and the main fabrics recommended here are linen linen blends so you have your linen rayon blends your linen cotton blends and then you have your cotton rayon blends you know all those types of nice fabrics and you know i would say that 100 percent rayon is not an adequate fabric although I have used it for both of mine. What I would not like to try and make this dress with, those fabrics that don't drape. So, you know, your gauze fabrics, your cotton voiles, your chambrays. Although it could look nice and it could work, it just depends on what you're going for. Whenever there are gathers involved, I try to stay away from fabrics that don't drape very nicely. I found recently a 100% rayon that is heavier weight than the typical rayon and it's textured and it's weaved to make it look like a linen. It actually feels like linen, but it is actually rayon. So if you find those sneaky fabrics, I think they would work too. I would think a medium weight crepe would also work. The sizes available for this pattern are double zero to 20 US. And on the double D cup, which is the largest cup size measurement there on the body is 48 and a half inches. And for the hips is also 48 and a half inches. So this is not a fitted style. There is ease here in the design. And at the bust, depending on the size, you'll find anywhere from two to three inches of positive ease, which is super appropriate for a design like this. You know, it's not gonna be tight. It's not gonna be extremely loose either. And the individual cup sizes, you know, A, B, C, D, and double D are going to help you get a really nice fit around the bust. Further down at the waist and hips, there is plenty of positive ease, you know, anywhere from six to eight inches. So it is a really comfy dress to wear, but because of all the shaping in the princess seams, it is not a boxy style. So that ticks a lot of boxes for me. Ticks a lot of boxes. I just said boxy. <laughs> <laughs> there are plenty of pattern pieces for you to have a lot of fun with. You have the center front bodices that have a center seam and those pieces need to be cut twice. So one will be the outer ones and the other pair will be for the inside like a facing type thing. Then you have the side pieces that have the princess seams and those are two pieces because of the pocket situation. So you have two pieces down the side and then you have the center front skirt that is gathered there. So 
lots of fun with lots of pieces but it's very fun to put together and there are notches everywhere to help you put all this together i will be showing you all this in the segment that is coming up in up close and so personal you will see a lot of practical footage as always how I dealt with those facings and the interfacing, how to construct the pockets, general construction of the dress and the best V neckline technique I have seen. the two center front pieces that have been sewn in the middle they do have a seam there in the middle half an inch seam allowance is what the pattern uses the black you can see there is a bit of interfacing I use to stabilize that neckline that replaces stay stitching so that neckline is going to be really really well protected and it's not going to deform this piece here is the center front skirt and you can see it's wider and it's because it needs to be gathered in to fit there. There are two rows of parallel stitching with a long stitch length to help gather that in. On this V point there when you sew there is a dot there that marks where you have to stop sewing so you don't sew all the way up to the top you can see it's open there a little bit. These center front pieces are cut twice like you will have another one exactly like this. The one that has been stabilized like that will be the layer that is shown on the outside of the garment and then the other ones that you have cut out have been fully interfaced and those will go onto the inside of the garment so this area will be super nice and protected and it will be sort of like self-lined sort of like a huge facing that is the same size and shape as this only that that inner one will be fully interfaced that inner one will also just be sewn up to there, leaving a little gap. There, there is a dot on the pattern that you mark on your fabric and that's where you start sewing down. So I'm just going to gather... <clears throat> I'm going to put this center front skirt right sides together with this, do the gathering to make it match and then sew it together with half an inch seam allowance. Here you can see this being gathered to match the width of the center front panels. It's slight gathers, it's not going to be bulky or anything and I just really tried hard to make it nice and even Then I can always control while I'm sewing gathers always on top so you can see what's happening with them. I also want to mention that from the edge in about half an inch I don't want gathers there because that is the seam allowance. I don't want gathers inside the seam allowance so you can see it quite flat there and then the gathers start and that's the same for both ends. Now that this center piece has already been constructed, the two center front bodices with the center front skirt, I can put this aside. These are the skirt pieces that go on the bottom of the side panels for the front. You can see that they slant up like that. One end is taller than the other. And we need to put some facings there that I have already pre-made, pre-prepared. And those will be the facings for the pocket entrance. You saw that I blocked fused them, so I have two mirror images there. The bottom here, I did a guide stitch, long stitch length and already pressed it up by half an inch. And now these will go there. They match the shape perfectly. That notch there matches the one at the back there. That needs to be sewn with half an inch seam allowance. Then that seam allowance needs to be graded, understitched and then the facing flipped over to the other side. Seam allowance is half an inch and that's quite wide to have that, it'll be quite bulky so this needs to be graded. The main fabric here, the one that's not interfaced, not the facing, I'm going to trim that down to probably 3 eighths of an inch so I'm just going to trim it down a little bit. The facing one will be shorter than the main fabric. 
I'm not trimming away that much. I think this fabric is a little bit delicate, so I'm leaving it a little bit wider than I would usually. Now that this has been graded, you can open this up. The facing is here. All the seam allowance has to go towards the facing, and then you need to understitch. That will ensure that the facing will stay inside. This has already been pressed. I'd already done that in a previous step, so that's ready. After I've understitched, I'm just going to hand base that down nice and neat and then top stitch this facing down so there will be a visible stitch there on the outside of this pocket entrance. I've given both facings a good press, they've been flipped to the inside. I just did some quick hand basting there to keep it in place and now I'm just going to sew on the edge. I sew from the inside, I'm very happy with how the stitch looks on both sides of the garment so if I stitch here what comes up on the other side looks really nice as well if I wasn't happy with that and I couldn't get my machine to look nice on both sides I would definitely sew on top here making sure I'm measuring the seam allowance really well so that I do catch the facing on the other side but I just think it's easier to sew when you're actually seeing what you're doing <laughs> So that's been sewn, that's nice and neat on the outside. I'm just whip this basting stitch off. Here we have the side front pieces, the princess seams, you can see the curve there. This is the side seam, I have both of them there. And these are the bottom bits that will complete the side panels for the front of this dress. So we have those that we've just done the facings for the entrance of the pocket of. Remember I told you they were slanted? So there's a little slant, there's a taller one there and a shorter one there. That taller bit there is what is going to match to this one. Now on these pieces you will see notches here on the wrong side of the fabric. So I have marked the notches onto the right side of the fabric and I even drew a diagonal line to match them so it goes like that. And it will follow the shape of the piece that we're going to put underneath. This bottom edge of this piece needs to have been finished already. I've just surged the bottom there on both of them. There you can see that faint white line with my chalk mark that will be removed. <laughs> it's removable. And I will take my piece, it has the same shape, the taller bit here, the shorter bit there, and match it at those notches on that diagonal line I drew across. That's how you're going to put your hand in your pocket. And then what's behind is going to be the actual pocket. There's no extra pocket piece, it's just the overlap. So here you need to touch and feel. I can feel where the edge is at the back. And I'm just going to pin that together and I'm going to base that in place by hand. And then you need to top stitch further up from the edge of the back so you actually catch it. Okay, I've just basted the whole thing around so it can just be as one piece and I can forget about it. This is how it looks on the other side. This is the top bit there, the one that has the princess seam. And this will be the end of the pocket. So this is where I have to sew across to close the pocket. And then the sides will be closed off when I add it to the other seams. And then from there is where you're going to put your hand inside. But I'm just gonna leave the I'm gonna leave these hand basting stitches there in place until I'm done with the dress. For now, I'll just sew across there. Okay, so here are all the pieces that are ready to put together to complete the front piece of this dress. Those are the two center fronts. I have a center seam in the middle stabilized neckline, the center front skirt has been sewn, gathers, seam allowance is pressed up. And then we have these two side front pieces that are composed of two pieces because one overlaps over the other to form that pocket. You can see that end right there that has been sewn across. And now to put these together, there are several notches along the way that you just need to match up. Sew the princess seams, finish the edges, and that will complete the front. So the whole front it has been sewn, the princess seams, I've pressed the seams in towards the middle. They need to be pressed in so that they can be covered with the facing that's going to come at a later stage. This is the back and it's more simple. The center back was cut on the fold and then you have side pieces for the back, princess seams also. For this one I have pressed the seams looking outwards 
just to like create less bulk on the shoulder seams. I need to put these two together at the shoulder seams and then start working on that facing. These are the other center front pieces. They're the same pattern piece. You just cut another pair. These have been fully interfaced block fused at the beginning. That up there is the back facing. They have been sewn at the shoulder seams. On the edges, I've done a guide stitch at 3 8 of an inch from the edge and that helps press it in all the way around. Over there where there's curves, you need a clip so that it can turn the curve nicely. I have sewn the shoulder seams of the dress and then the facing has been put right on top following the shape of the neckline, right sides together. And because the neckline of the dress was stabilized with that strip of interfacing there and this was blocked fused, it means that the neckline has kept its shape and everything matches really well. Now at the center of this V there is a little thing different. Okay, that's the center of the V up closer. Remember there was a dot where you had to sew from the dot down, basically leaving about half an inch not sewn on both the facing and the main piece. You have it open there. So this is going to help this V not be bulky there. So they both match exactly right there. And now when we sew, we have to start sewing right there where that stitch is, right on that point there. And then go around the neckline, come back on the other side and finish right there as well. We won't be sewing over the seam allowance. And then this will just be like free inside. And when we flip it, it will turn the V super crisp. Okay, so I'm going to let my needle down right on top of that stitch there. And I'm sewing with a half an inch seam allowance. And I'm not going to back tack, I'm just going to sew and then I'm going to secure that by hand afterwards. other point of the V around the other side. I'm also not going to sew over the seam allowance. Okay, so that's the V neckline sewn. You can see the seam allowance of the facing are free and inside too. The main seam allowance is from the center front. So basically it was just pushing them all that way, sewing right there, going around and then when you are almost there, pushing the seam allowances to the other side. So that means that none of them have been caught within that V. And I have long tails here. I didn't back tack because I, I wanted it to be really precise. So now I'm just going to secure that by hand there. I'm just grading the seam allowance. You see the facing, I have already trimmed it down to about a quarter of an inch. And now I'm trimming the main neckline, the, the main fabric. And that one's going to end up being a little bit longer than what I've trimmed, you can see. Okay, at the point of this V there, I trim the seam allowance smaller, just to have less bulk there. And you can see how this is open and finished in there when you flip it. And it gives a really crisp V. Super nice finish. And it is secure because the stitch started there, went around, started there. I did secure that by hand. But it's so nice. Anyway, now I'll just understitch. The V is right there. So I'm starting about 3 8 from the V. Here is the facing and the seam allowance is going towards the facing. I'm getting to the other point of the V that's right there.
I've got my dress on the ironing board. The side seams are still dangling, but the facing is on. Seam allowance was graded, snipped, understitched, <laughs> flipped. And now you can see this was done already that had been pressed in. And this will cover the seam allowance that is pressed towards the center of the front. So it'll be super neat there covering all that seam. So the option would be to base this all around really neatly, making sure there's nothing wrong. Everything matches perfect. And then you would flip to this other side and stitch in the ditch on the princess seam. And then the instructions say, alternatively, you can slip stitch by hand. And I think I'm gonna do that. I do also have an accompanying blog post if you want to see more about my thoughts on the sewing construction. I do pour out a lot of my thoughts there. More than I, I can actually talk here too because then videos will be like an hour long. So the blog posts are always complementary to the content that I put here when I have the time to actually sit down and write them. So not every video has a blog post. This one does. You would have seen the texture while I was sewing in the up close that it does look like it's linen but it's not linen, it's 100% rayon. So it's got the best of both worlds. It is not as hard to work with as the typical rayon. It doesn't slide around everywhere. I, I find it a little bit more structured and it does drape beautifully like rayon does, but it looks like linen. I have no idea how they made this fabric. It is definitely not linen. It is 100% rayon, textured rayon. These little dots everywhere, they're not polka dots. I, I find it looks like Splash, splashes of paint or something I don't know but here you can see the V neckline there it's super clean there is a center seam there and the waist seam here and that's where the gathers come from there now this center piece is not extremely gathered I did go through the maths process because I really like doing that stuff the proportion here 40% more so the width here is a certain amount and the width on this one is only 40% more that means that the gathers are just really slight and discreet there it's not excessive gathering and I, I was concerned about that because this seam is placed slightly higher up on the waist I really didn't want to have a lot of bulk there but actually this amount of gathers there is really flattering and it's really discreet and if you do it with a flowing fabric like this i think it's really cute and then you saw how these pockets were made super fun to do they don't move around anywhere there's no pocket bags in there it's just the part of the dress and they don't create bulk on the hip because they're on the front so these are definitely pockets i enjoy sewing now the only fitting adjustment i made to this pattern for my body was to lower the bust point by five eighths of an inch they are princess seams they come from there it can be done <laughs> i have a video on the channel already showing how to lower or raise a bust point when there's darts the traditional type princess seam that comes from the arm side like this and the one that comes from the shoulder so if you haven't seen that and you want to see how it's done, this is how the thumbnail looks and you can have a look there. It's exactly the way I lowered my bust point here to have a really good fit. I did make a muslin. I made a muslin in scrap fabric. I made it short to see if I would like this style as a top and I totally do. <laughs> you can always customize the shape on the upper chest with princess seams and I really like that about princess seams because you can make it fit your body easier than with darts, you know? Okay, this is the front. Remember I mentioned that these two front pieces, you cut two pairs, two that are for the outer and two for the inner. These inner ones are the ones that are interfaced that I did block fusing for, as always. The facing on the back also I did block fusing to help them keep their shape. Everything fits perfect. They are sewn together there at the shoulder seams. And then the V neckline there, you saw how that was done. Beautiful, beautiful. The understitching doesn't start right at the tip, but about three eighths up. You don't want to catch those seam allowances that are inside with understitching. So it can't be to the very tip, just a bit further up all the way around and then finishing there. Now there are two options to sew this down. You saw that I folded in at a pretty early stage. <laughs> I folded in the edges of this facing uh, with a guide stitch at three eighths of an inch. So when you turn this to this side, you can stitch in the ditch from the right side of the dress along the princess seams. And because this is folded in at three eighths and your seams are at half an inch, this will protrude a little bit. So you will catch them with the stitch in the ditch. That means 
what I would do is I would hand baste that really, really carefully to make sure it's all aligned and all flat and all perfect before going ahead and stitching in the ditch. And that would catch this on this inside. The other option is to sew it by hand, slip stitch. That is the option I chose. I think it's great that in the pattern it says that you can sew by hand. Um, sometimes we forget that we do have these hands that can do a lot of things. And I'm very old school in my sewing and I know there are certain techniques I enjoy the most when I do with hand sewing. Like something like this. And it's so, so neat and so clean and no one can see the hand sewing. It's fine to do it stitch in the ditch. It'll work okay as well. I just always like the hand sewing. That covers that seam there. That's why that seam didn't need to be finished. I left it raw because it's covered with this. So it's extremely neat. The seams are pressed to the inside, to the center. You can see there, super nice. Once you get all the steps done and you've got your front all constructed, you got your back, you know, do your shoulder seams, put your facing, do your side seam, do your sleeve, you know, take it step by step. It was super fun, super enjoyable to make. I love the dress. Let's see how it looks. Here is my dress. This is the original length of the dress. I suppose it's meant to hit lower, but I like my dresses above the knee, so I didn't make any length adjustments. I like the style because it is relaxed fit but it's not boxy either. So the princess seams really help give it shaping. It does have waist definition and a bit of room here with the gathers and the A-line skirt is really nice. I know with my print, it's hard to see the details. The seam here is not an empire line. It's quite a few inches below my bust but I would say it's probably an inch above my waist and I like it there it's really nice the gathering as you saw is not a lot it's not excessive gathering there it's just a little bit and it's nice and discreet and it's a lovely detail there then the princess seams they come through there so here is the pocket facing there you put your hand in and it bumps on the piece that overlaps behind it and there's a little seam that you can't see super easy to construct pockets and they are the type that won't move around they don't flop around either I think they're pretty discreet and I wouldn't put things in them but they, they look pretty the tip of that V is so clean with that construction method I really enjoyed that construction method it's so nice and I don't have a gaping neckline you know all the techniques of stabilizing and fusing it all works really good to have a great result a great looking neckline I love that Super love it. Sleeves are short. They're not loose or tight. I think they, they fit really nicely. This is the type of sleeve I like. And the shoulder seam is there, right where my shoulder is, so I didn't need to adjust the shoulders. Princess seams come from the shoulder, and it's my favorite type of princess seam. It just fits the bust so well, and with my cup size, there's princess seams at the back. So the princess seams here have the darts incorporated into the seam. It does go in at the small of the back and then out towards the hips. And I think it gives it really nice shaping from the back. I really like it. I think I would always make this dress in a drapey fabric. I wouldn't want to make it in a stiffer, non-draping one because then the skirt would stick out more and be more A-lined. I like it like this, nice and flowy and same as these gathers there. I like them being discreet and flowing over the tummy instead of sticking out. So I love this fabric choice and I would definitely make this again in a similar type fabric. Love the dress, I feel really great in it. After my pattern test was done, I went ahead and made another one. I always knew that my next version would be sleeveless. I chose one of my 100% rayons and I mentioned that I would not recommend this fabric and I still stand by I wouldn't recommend it, but I still used it. <laughs> I did a few things differently to it, but you know, um, if you're not used to working with rayon, it can be a fabric that would deform and distort and stretch out and for the structure here on the princess seams and on this center bodice, 
it could be a little bit difficult to manipulate if you're not used to it. I do take liberties with fabric choices sometimes because of my previous sewing experience. So it did work for me, but I would suggest sticking to the recommended fabrics and don't choose 100% rayon, although it looks amazing and it's beautifully floaty and everything. Look at this fabric. I got this fabric for my birthday a few months ago. I got the same V-neckline, the same construction here for the centerpiece. I didn't change anything there. The sleeveless armhole is the same armhole that would have a sleeve. And I'll let you know afterwards what I did to it here to make it fit me without any gaping because, you know, there was supposed to be a sleeve there. <laughs> that is finished with bias binding inside. Satin bias tape, super neat. You can see the facing there. The, it's been sewn down. What I've done with both dresses actually is the back, the back part from the shoulder seam or this has the back facing. I did sew that with a machine. What I did by hand was this area, this little bit on the inside. Now up to there, it looks like your normal dress, right? It has the gathering there as per usual, but there's a little twist. Okay, I have two tiers of gathering here on the skirt. The original dress just had the seam there, the gathers there, and just one piece here. But I have two. So there is another line there and more gathers there on the center panel. The only change I wanted to make to this version was to make it sleeveless. That was my intention. I started doing my pattern Tetris that I always do. And I just could not get this center front piece that is cut on the fold to fit. I just could not get it to fit. I didn't have enough fabric, maybe 10 more inches of length of fabric that I didn't have. And that's when I thought, hey, I have this area about 15 inches at the bottom of the fabric there. That's all I have left. The full width of the fabric, you know, 58 inches. What if I divide this center panel into two pieces and then I can cut one from one side and one from the other, and then I can sew them together and then I'll have the full length. So that's what I did. The gathering here is about 40% more than what this measures. So what I did here was measure the bottom of this bit, multiply that measurement by 1.4, and that's how I cut this bottom piece. I just made it wider and then gathered that into there. Super simple. I love this. <laughs> Let's see how this one looks. This is my second version, non-official version with the two tiers on the front. I really love this print and the way the dress flows. Same length above the knee. All these adjustments in the center don't really affect the total length because you're gonna end up with these center pieces being the same length anyway because I added seam allowance between the tiers. So I love this. Red shoes, I could wear tan shoes, black shoes, whatever I want. <laughs> You can see the two tiers better, the seam there, the same as the original dress, nothing changed. It's just that there I have an extra tier for more floatiness, for more gathering, a little bit there. Love it. And I mean, I think it turned out exactly like I pictured it. The princess seams, it does cut into the print right there. By lowering the bust point, I make sure that the fullness of the princess seams hit where I need it to hit. The princess seams at the back give it the same lovely shaping. I like it that it's nice and loose, but also has some shaping. I can't even tell you how much I love this V-neckline technique. It's so neat. It's just so much better than how I've been doing it before. So definitely something I will adopt for other projects with v-necklines. We have sneaky armholes that don't have sleeves. They still work with a little trick. I'm going to tell you what I've done just to adjust this area a little bit. There was a tiny bit of gaping, but that's to be expected because there was supposed to be a sleeve there. And designs that have sleeves do need the ease for you to be able to move. It's not the same as a sleeveless armhole. Extremely happy with this hacked version. I will definitely make this again and probably in something very light, very sheer, and I'll modify the neckline for that, but I'm very happy with this hack. I think it just looks so nice. The original also is very nice, and I did this hack of two tiers 
because I didn't have enough fabric. Sometimes not having enough makes me think what I can do and come up with things like this that are also very pretty. Very happy. extremely happy with this super nice for the ladies that have access to exclusive content on patreon i have filmed a video about this more of the practicalities about this specific version so you can check it out there if you're on patreon with me and i wanted to mention what i did to the arm side you can't just take out a sleeve and then just expect the armhole to fit it will rarely fit for some designs i just go and do a little sneaky armhole dart and if I'm feeling really inspired, I would have to make a muslin first and then close that dart and rotate that volume off to the side buster or to the waist or do something like that. In this case, that seemed a bit too much because rotating that volume into the princess seam would have meant a lot of arts and crafts. I am just not up for that work. <laughs> and actually the, the amount of that was gaping was very minimal. This does have cup sizes and I'm working with a C cup. So it does fit my bust super well. It's not going to gape excessive amounts. So I measured there how much would I need to dart that excess off and calculated about half of that amount. <laughs> my dart was tiny. It was about an inch, so half an inch wide. So from the front here, the side seam, and this is not traditional, I took half an inch away from this seam there just to bring it in from the front. I left the back the same, just there, just about there, and then just return to its normal position. And then I still had a tiny amount of excess here, another half an inch. I did stay stitch these armholes as soon as I was done cutting my pieces because I knew this was sleeveless and I, I knew I had a lot of sewing to do before getting to the armholes. So I wanted the, to prevent them from stretching. I had a row of stay stitching there. So I just pulled on the ends and just slightly made it shorter by pulling and gathering, but you can't see the gathers because it's so, so small amount. Now the binding is narrow inside, so it will cope with that. So that's what I did and it's fully closed. It's all good. And I didn't need to go and do horrible arm side darts that would have looked terrible with this. I mean, imagine having a dart there and the princess seam, no. But I mean, have a go that could work for you as a little quick fix. I'm very happy with these dresses. I would definitely make another one in a chiffon fabric. This beautiful dress pattern is on sale. It's 20% off for the first week during its release week. I will leave all the details in the description box. If you like this style and want to try it for yourself, you are very welcome to use my affiliate link. If my sewing inspires you, if I gave you ideas, that sort of thing, I do make a small commission from those sales and that helps support me. So thank you if you use the link ahead of time. I hope this was a fun video to watch. I will see you again very soon with more sewing. Bye.